of devils. I'm sick of it. Hey, want to talk about the insurrection? Hmm. Let me tell you something. You ain't seen the insurrection yet. Not this way for the most part overseas, but churches in the American culture. You know, one of the largest expenses we have in buildings, the amount of handicap parking and handicap accessibility that we have in our churches. Now, let me make you mad for a minute, and I don't really care. Why is it you pull up to a church that says they operate in faith and you have 50 handicapped parking spots? Ain't nobody laid hands on them handicapped folks yet. I don't care what Twitter says. I'm going to say something right now going to make about maybe 10 of you mad. Now, I don't care if it makes all of you mad. We'll start over next week. You know the Bible talks about church discipline, Right? About kicking folks out that cause trouble. I'm almost going to say I'm about to the place. I am to the place. I'm to the place right now. If you vote Democrat, I don't even want you around this church. You can get out. You can get out, you demon. You can get out, you baby butchering election thief. I titled this video that Marcus is a black Greg Locke because they have so many similarities. They're friends. Those chairs you see within his church, Greg Locke has something to do with it. The same type of conspiracy thinking and everything like that. They both have that. What do pirates do? Steal, plunder. What do we believe happened in that election? I'm gonna just leave that alone. I know, I know I'm going down the rabbit hole. And like I said, this is all speculation. I wanna be clear. I'm not saying that God told me that. I just said, man, that's very interesting. That in cases and everything, and they are just alike. So they're brothers and they're not brothers in Christ because they're brothers on a hateful message that they continue to push. Now he's come out with the same conspiracy thing and it's switched over now to Kamala Harris. And don't, before you try to say, well, you're just Democrat, just no. We're gonna talk from a spiritual standpoint because Marcus Rogers is a black nationalist, Christian nationalist. He supports Christian nationalism when in reality, they don't even want someone like him of it, part of their plan. Christian nationalist, when I ask you the question, a Christian nationalist and a white nationalist is pretty similar, 90% similar. And he's not even a wanted within their particular group. He's playing to a rising white Christian nationalist movement within the Republican Party. I say it proudly, we should be Christian nationalists. Christian nationalists believe that the law of the land is not the Constitution, but instead the law of God as they interpret it. Trump supporters are increasingly overt in their calls to replace democracy with a MAGA theocracy. The church is supposed to direct the government. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk. We're meant to be a Christian nation. We should be a Christian nation. Welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> we are here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will we, we will endeavor to, oh, forget, oh, to get rid oh. of it and replace it with, with this right here. That was a cross he was holding. The idea that the will of voters is irrelevant because God has anointed Trump was a recurring message in the efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Because it is not Joe Biden that rules this country. That particular group and ideology believe that it's a white man's world and that they should run everything and run it from a godly standpoint for God, with the God's laws in every facet of society. So he's not even wanted in there. They they would not if if they get if they were to get everything the way that they want. This particular group and mindset of people that are serving a perverted style of Christianity, as I continue to say. He wouldn't have any platform with these folks. They, 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 they wouldn't have him nowhere near. So it's funny how he's always, you know, he's trying to suck up to these types of people. But he has hate in his heart. Him, Greg Locke, and all of them. They have hate towards the people within society because he, his big word is, you know, this is, it's going, they're trying to turn it to a Sodom and Gomorrah. 
They're trying to do these. You, the, uh, and they go right back to Obama and the legislation. Yeah, that stuff got the legislation. Part of the legislation was, you know, from, from what I know, um, uh, understood on some of it was, is that you had couples that were together that if somebody died, they were together and built assets together for, you know, things live, maybe bought a home together, this or that. If somebody died because of whatever, that they lose, lost everything. And, and that was part of some of that. Now, you know, and there, there's the other. Now, I, and I, don't, I don't agree with none of that uh, stuff as far as the male to male relationships, female to female. I don't agree with that. But you know what? I can't take my religious views and go about in society when there's freedom of religion, freedom of everything within this world and oppose it on the everybody the way I the way that I want it. My job as a minister, my job as a Christian and your job as a Christian is to preach and teach the gospel. And see, and this is where they've got it all perverted and all messed up. They're so caught up within the world and trying to enact laws that they're willing to, the, the evangelicals have lowered themselves to the bottom of the barrel that the best that they could do to put up is a rapist, a convicted criminal, and a person that's been shamming people for decades. That's the best that they can do because they figure, I guess, that they can manipulate the man and get whatever they want out of him and, and things like that. But that's what evangelicals have done. Lowered themselves to the bottom of the barrel out of all of the candidates. We talked about it in the other video where H. A. Hutchinson was a, he's a true conservative, pro-life, all of the things that Trump is, that he claims to be, because we know Trump's not, that he's just using people as he always, he's a Democrat all his life and he's using people. We already know that. But he, H. A. Hutchinson was just one example. You know, you got Mitt Romney, you got all of these people, that these people that they done pushed away. These are people that evangelicals really could have got behind if they wanted to, you know, still have some type of platform to get some type of messaging. No, they want a dictator style autocrat uh, uh, democracy. They, they don't want to. They want to throw democracy out the window and instill this nationalist movement on society and, and act laws on people and force people to do it because they're so mad because you know why? They haven't been doing what they're supposed to be doing to begin with. If they would have been preaching and teaching the gospel like you're supposed to, that, as I always say, the Holy Spirit will do the work. You don't, you can't change somebody that is battling with sexual issues by switching on a law or somebody that wants to get an abortion and think that you're shutting off all the, does the drug stop? I don't care how many walls you build, whatever the cartels are going to evolve. It's evolved as long as there's an appetite in America for drugs, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. And, and the same goes for sin. You can't stop sin manually. You can't stop sin by enacting laws. You can't stop it. There's only one person that knows how to deal with sin. And that was Jesus Christ when he died on the cross and paid the penalty. And he set us free so that we would not have to be a slave to sin. And that's the thing, the problem with a lot of these people. Unfortunately, they're caught in bondage. They're slaves to sin. And we're supposed to have a compassionate heart and continue to preach the message. Yes, we call out sin. Yes, we're supposed to preach, uh, 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 stand behind the pulpits of we're pastors and, 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 and preach the gospel and not have flowery messages and stand up and speak boldly the word of God. But we're not to demonize people in such a way to where they look at us and begin to hate Jesus even more. You know, there's a story. I, I, I'll never forget this story that was on... Uh, uh, one of the crime channels, what is it, Forensic Files or something like that. And this guy, this young girl worked at like a Dairy Queen or Burger King or something, and she opened the store. She was 16, and she went to open the store one morning. And uh, a knock came on the door, a guy dressed in a maintenance man suit. Coming to find out, this guy had been just released from prison. And he went in there, raped her, handcuffed her to the sink and shot and killed her. And after they eventually caught him, he said, he said, 
when I was in prison the first time here, he said that there was a blonde haired CO, CO, corrections officer, that mistreated him and did him wrong the whole time he was there, what he felt. And he said the minute he said he made up his mind when he got released, that he was going to take the life of the first blonde that he comes across that looks similar to her. And I never forgot that. I mean, I, I mean that's brutal because that shows you some people are crazy. And that's how some, that's what this nationalist and people like Marcus Rogers and the Greg Locks and all of these others that are trying to ram religion down their fo uh, th people's throats. They are just like this guy that did that to that girl. They're, they're, bu they're building up hate. Th their hate is actually building up resistance and more hate within the people that are lost. And, and their form of revenge is, you know, I, I don't want nothing to do with your Christ. You're not, I'm not coming to your church. I don't want nothing, to, anything to do with it. So in, uh, and in return, you think you're doing good, but in reality, you're doing more damage. But in reality, you're doing a whole lot of damage. You, that's why I say you got spiritual blood in your hands. So Marcus Rogers, for example, to show how deceived this man is, is that he, he, he as we talked about in the previous video, he never likes to follow orders. He was always, he was always in trouble in the military. Always uh, uh, there's something, you know, co uh, combative in some kind of way. Wants to argue with everybody in every kind of way. Think he knows everything in every kind of way. I said he'll be thrown out of seminary if he was going to school because he thinks he knows everything. He thinks he's got a new interpretation of the Bible and things like that. And then he's so deceived that he, and he wants things to change his society so bad. That he was willing to latch onto the lion, Mr. Trump, so much that he took his tail down there on January the 6th to hang out with these folks and put his life in jeopardy and, 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 and knowing he's got a wife and kids and things and put his life in jeopardy. And then when people there at the event lost their lives, he comes back home like it's nothing, you know? And like, it's no big deal. I guess it was like no big deal with a guy that he, what, when he was in an unrestricted area and, and baptized him when he was in the military and that guy drowned or whatever. And I, I, I don't know the whole, all the whole details of the story, but I just know that he didn't listen in. He shouldn't have been in the area. He's not supposed, he just, he never listens. But yet, see, and that just shows you where he is as a person that you are so deceived yourself that you go, to the Capitol on January 6th because your golden calf, Mr. Trump, told you something. And you and now it's like after he's been convicted of, you know, of, of, of sexual assault towards a woman, convicted of cover up and cheating on his wife when she was pregnant and all of that and all of these other things. And when he was younger and, and, and this, you know, called for the death penalty for the Central Park Five and then birtherism where he tries to play that. And now he's playing the birtherism and they're playing the race card again and all of this and that. And he is OK with that. That shows you right there. So why he's trying to demonize the you know, other people, the, 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 the gay people, demonize Democratic people. De uh, demonize Kamala, demonize other people like that. He needs to look in the mirror himself because he's okay to take the stage with people like Greg Locke. He's okay to go on tour with other frauds that are fought, that, that cause themselves prophets and apostles and all of this kind of junk. And, and he's okay with that. And then he's okay. He's all right with all of that. You see, he's the one. And anybody like him, including Greg Locke and anyone similar to them. And it just shows because it's really sad as I made in the message when I made yesterday. It's really sad because he's got kids. He's got kids and many other people got kids. And this is their daddy. That their daddy is what they're watching, the example. And he's doing nothing. He thinks he's doing a bunch of good when in reality, he's doing bad because he's setting his kids up for a, a, a warped mindset because I don't know if you've seen this, 
where uh, I think it was a transgender kid. As There's the article up there as it pops up here. Got stabbed in the airport here this past week. Was eating and somebody just came up to him and started stabbing him. You know, and it's like, what's that about? See, and that's hate. And they're in critical condition. Minding their own business. It, I mean, that person wasn't bothering that guy. But see, when you plant these seeds of all this hate in society towards certain groups of people and all of this other things, towards homeless people, towards people that are struggling and going to call them welfare queens or something. And, and there is times when a woman may have to go on welfare because she relied on her husband and he's ducking and dodging child support and don't want to pay. And she's out here struggling and she needs help. And the same people that you are supporting, that you claim that's supposed to be making society so right and all of that, they want to cut the program for people, all of these people like that. So how much demon is that? Because since everybody else is a demon, these are, so the people, so there's demons on both sides, see? But for some reason, they're hung up on this gay thing. They're hung up on this, for this totally hung up on that. And then they'll flip over to this abortion thing. They're so hung up, hung up on that and things like that, as that's the only thing in society that has anything, you know, that because you don't agree with it. There's plenty of people today that don't agree with it. And what is your job to do? This is what I say. Somebody asked me, you know, well, you, you believe abortion is that? They're trying to trap me with little questions. And my, my response is, well, you know, it's not my job to try to tell oh, somebody what they, you know, all I can do is give, show compassion if a situation comes up, give them, you know, the gospel, give it in such a way and kind of have an understanding and you might, and if you conduct yourself, and if you are preaching the word, if you're teaching the word, if you're being compassionate and doing the things that the scripture says, you don't know what the, the seeds are planted. You don't know what the Holy Spirit may do with that woman as she battles and wrestles with that. But the fact that you think that because you set up and you don't like what people are doing and things in society and that you think that, oh, we're going to put this law, you know, there's plenty of laws for drunk driving. Does that stop it? No, it doesn't. All it will do is create an underground, the cartel, I guess, you know, there'll be cartels, there'll be everybody that will that, that go underground with it and nothing will change. And, and just because you think the laws are there, it's not going to change anything. It's right here. It's, this is what changes. When you preach the gospel and do what the word tells us to do and let the Holy Spirit do the work, then you will begin to see change. That's how it works. But you can't come in like some tyrant and think that we're going to, this is how we're going to fix society and I'm going to this or that and, and the hell with you over here. And if you do this or vote like that, you ain't no good. And all of these, all of this little hateful talk. You know, I mean, it's a shame. I've been saved now since October of 1992. And I've never seen anything like it before in my life. This has gotten way, way out of control. And you know, like I said, many people, the way that the Greg Locks, the way that the Marcus Rogers and all of them, and he's got all of these people that follow him so brainwashed that they believe any and everything the man says. And the man is way off on many of his teachings and all of these things and all of that jumping around and acting all crazy. You know, 30 years from now, what you if what you gonna do? Because as the body begins to age, you can't do all that jumping and flipping all around and acting all crazy then. You need you all have to have some sound doctrine and teaching within you. And you know what? That's where you need to repent and go and get into the word of God and, and come back later, basically. But unfortunately, you're caught up into this media age. You're caught up into this like a whole lot of people that are gotten on YouTube and want to start lying on the Lord in various ways and giving false teachings. And guess what? You're going to have to give an account for that. Because as I close, if you remember the story, you always want to talk. He always want to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah and people want to talk about that in society. But one thing about Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham 
prayed, he, he pleaded with God not to destroy the city. He pleaded with God not to destroy the city. Abraham showed his heart. He showed that he had a compassion for the people that the Lord was going to destroy. And he, and, and, but the Lord saved his family. Thank God. And, and as you see, why should we, you know, there's too many believers out here, out here that don't have compassion towards those that are lost and you rather see them destroyed. That's why you hear these nationalist people talking about hanging people, talking about revenge, talking about when they get back into power, go and Mr. Trump is part of it. They get back into power. We're going to do all of these uh, tribunals, what people be talking about and jailing people with hearings and all of that. How is that going to help anybody? That ain't going to do anything. And all it's going to do is cause Christian to be people that call themselves Christians to become more boisterous, more lifted up, and they'll lift him up even more, Mr. Trump, even more. And what will happen is you will have so many people that will be drawn away like you have never seen because they're going to attribute that to God when in reality it's the devil that has propped him up in this way in order to see people be drawn away. That's what's then happened. And Marcus Rogers is a fool if he doesn't see it otherwise. So that's all I have. I know it's not a popular video. I know many of you are going to get all upset. For some of you, if you're a subscriber of his or a follower of his, you're going to be upset. And things. But you know, it needs to be said. You need to look in the mirror and examine yourself. You need to really examine yourself and examine who you're following. Because people like this has no business being a pastor. Has no business standing behind. He's a, he, he, he. Could you imagine? As I, let me say this before I close with. Could you imagine? Like I said, if you're a couple and you're and you're married and, you, and and you're having household problems with your kid or this whatever, you want to go to somebody that is mature, somebody that has wisdom and all of these various things that they you can go to them and you think you really could sit down with a Greg Locke or a Marcus Rogers the way that they conduct themselves. Mark Greg Locke got rid of his wife for the church secretary. Look at what Marcus Rogers is. All of this, all of this crazy. How they're going to set up in the way that they conduct themselves. And you can see the bitterness or whatever's going on within their heart. How, how, what, what, how they're going to counsel you and conduct themselves as a pastor? I don't know. But that's all I have for now. Evangelism for God is a channel where we talk about issues the church will run away from. Punch Satan right in between the chops. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.